Hi everyone, I'm back with another full process video. Uh, this time it's all about how I make a portrait of my family's dog Blitzen. Uh, that's him in the corner there, of course. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and say the sad part. Blitzen passed away in 2020 unexpectedly from a brain tumor. And because life has been busy and maybe I've been avoiding it too, I waited until now to make a tribute to him for myself. So that's what this painting is all going to be all about. Um, and this painting took a lot of twists and turns. So this will be a more hefty video, but I'm going to go over some tips for painters out there and explain my thoughts behind each decision. And um, for those looking for a relaxing painting content, hopefully my voice doesn't disrupt that vibe for you okay so with that being said I'm just gonna get right into it um, right now I'm making the underpainting usually I do make a sketch first with pencil but I really wanted to challenge myself by going with the flow more so um, I went straight to using paint um, I actually thought I was going to go more abstract for this piece too so loser brush strokes are a good way to start that sort of concept out um, a good exercise for artists that are out there, especially when you're trying to build confidence and trusting yourself to paint, is to do something similar to this. Um, just look at your reference, even better if you're studying something that exists in real life, like a still life you set up, and just paint what you see. I mean, literally, just go. Don't hesitate. You don't know yet if it's going to be wrong when you put that mark down. And really, each mark is a step closer to figuring out. And really, with acrylics, it's just it's low stakes because you can paint over everything. <laughs> and I, I use that option quite frequently. So really, just go for it. Um, you'll see me adjust the sketch I made of him many times on this canvas. So frankly, the beginning part isn't about making something perfect. It's just about moving forward. Um, get some form of that idea idea down. Throughout this painting, I did try to make more educated decisions by sketching everything out in Procreate first, which is what you'll see me looking at on my iPad. I didn't have enough time set aside to really go with the flow. Um, all of this was created in about six days, which is all I really had to work with in order to finish in time. Uh, this helped me experiment without wasting time to get to where I thought I needed to go. I uh, highly recommend sketching and planning paintings this way for those reasons. Uh, really the questions I needed to answer through sketching were what should the background look like and how does a Blitzen fit into that? Uh, my goal was to make something that fully represented him, so that guided me. I added in darker colors on the bottom because I know I'm going to lay brighter texture on top of it. Acrylics is a pretty opaque medium, so working dark to light is a great approach for not just the background, but for the subject too. So now I'm working on making those shapes on his face more specific. I always describe the eyes and nose first because they're easiest for me to focus on when starting like this. Um, and then I make more lines to taper his face. I know the colors are a bit crazy, but it will make for a better painting in the end, and you can still get a better sense where the shadows are going to be too after that round of detail, even if the colors are more unnatural. Again, I'm still stuck right now on making things more abstract, so that is another reason I added in bright red and purples, but honestly you can build this into a more realistic way too, which is what I end up doing in the end anyways. Uh, bright underpaintings make for more complex colors in the form of texture later. Uh, so don't think that this is just reserved for abstract paintings. Okay, so I was quite stuck on bringing direct attention to him. Um, I tried to stay away from a halo um, because I do think it is an easier cliche addition, but spoiler, um, these lines don't make the cut and a halo may end up being added anyways. So I guess, oh well, trust the process. The background is turning more and more into a mess in my opinion, so whenever I start feeling overwhelmed, I just move on to a different section. And I know for sure how I'm going to paint Blitzen, so let's move on. Uh, this, in a second here, let me pull it up, and I'm just adjusting the camera. Okay, here we go. Okay, here it is. Um, this is my favorite detail brush right now from Turkel Art Supplies. It's a short-handled round brush in the size 5.0, and this means I'm about to get into rendering. So. Um, making decent realistic fur takes time of course. I tend to blend in and around um, with more specific colors that I see in the, the reference photo using wet into wet technique. Then I'll just add small lines on top. Hard to explain, but hopefully you can see those words in action here. I tend to follow a medium to dark, the medium to highlights coloring pattern too. It's about to go into hyperdrive showing that, so I'm going to duck out for a bit while you watch.
As I'm finishing up this round of detail, I wanted to mention something I remembered from art school. One of my teachers said to keep everything soft as possible in the beginning, soft meaning fuzzy or blend into the background almost like the underpainting look, and things in the distance will stay that way, and you describe features or elements to bring them forward. Uh, I felt like I wanted his face to be the most detailed part of the painting, so everything else will be a step below the level of detail I put into Blitzen in order to bring him forward the most in the painting. Okay, personal info incoming. Uh, Blitzen and I shared the same birthday and went to Sedona many times to celebrate, and I absolutely love those memories we had there. So uh, I knew Sedona had to be included, and you're gonna see me add that into the background here in a second. Uh, he was the best hiking dog uh, whenever I went on a hike with him, and it didn't matter if he didn't know the person before that day, he would make sure that no one fell behind. Like, literally. <laughs> he would usually be in front of the group, and if he looked back and saw a slower walker, he would immediately sit down, and make everyone wait until that person personally <laughs> greeted him and told them that it was okay to keep the group going. And I, I really have so many stories about this dog and looking at this painting, it just wasn't going to fully show who he was without including more some way. Like if I kept going with my original idea, it would be me adding in more dabs of color everywhere and probably some abstract flowers, similar to the sketches you saw me looking at. Um, which uh, is just not enough. So my new solution was to include a halo <laughs> and fill it up with relevant symbols about him. To make the halo, I use a homemade compass. I do have an actual compass, but not one large enough for this canvas size. So a homemade one was needed. So that's where my trusty ribbon comes in. Uh, this will make a more accurate circle than freehanding it. Uh, it won't be too inaccurate, though I'm not gonna claim that this will have perfect results like a real compass, but it's good enough for me. So I just held it at one point and then use a pencil attached to the other end and swung it across like so to make a nice arc. I'm also not too worried about using pencil. Acrylic works pretty well with it and can cover it up, or you can just erase it when it's on top of dry paint. I decided to make the images simple outlines so that the background peeks through. I didn't want these to be too obnoxious and fight with Blitzen as a subject. I drew in antlers because he was named after the reindeer. We got him around Christmas. Uh, I chose a light bulb because he was very bright. Um, I taught him a ton of tricks and he could figure out a ton of things to his advantage. Like for example, my mom had to switch garbage cans from the wave sensor version because he would open it. <laughs> um, and like I said before, we shared the, the, the same birthday. So I included a birthday cake. He loves swimming. So I added in basic waves. Um, tennis balls were his favorite toy. All of these little images mean something in my brain. And yeah, okay, the, the cross out chicken was because he was allergic to chicken. Uh, I don't think I need to like give you a full rundown on literally everything, but that's, you know, uh, like the gist. The lighting looks different here because I'm painting at night. Uh, I would have left it out, but I think it's cool to see how the nose texture was made. Basically, I made dots, then made lines outlining those dots, and I used washes of color on top of them to blend them into the shadows of the nose. I don't think there's much more for me to add in this moment, so I'm just gonna let you guys continue to watch like you already were.
Now it's the next day and I'm going to add in more highlights and resolve the mouth more. While I'm working on these details, I'm thinking about the background. I really love the idea of the halo, um, but that did make me second guess the abstract background. It seemed to be getting too busy, so I went into Procreate and tinkered around. Honestly, my comfort zone is blue skies, so I am a tad irritated I went with this. I wish I chose a lavender and more weird color for the sky, although a uh, light blue did seem like a good relief from whatever was happening so um, I'm glad I did take the leap and erase the clutter. Hope you'd agree. Once that was painted in it made me feel a lot less stressed and settled back into my usual controlled style which was kind of the opposite of the mindset I had going into this. You know I really admire impressionists and abstract artists and I suppose that's all I meant to do because it's really hard for me to lose control. My next problem was the bottom half. How was Blitzen fitting into this now that it's more of like a grounded landscape? I started with a swirly idea as if like the fur was flying out into brush strokes. Um, it gave off more of a sloppy look though, so I went back into the Procreate drawing board. Um, and in Procreate, there's an option to liquefy. So I started to swirl an image I took of the painting, and I just, I loved how it started to mix into the environment without it looking forced. I played with that effect until I liked what I saw, and then I just copied the swirls um, from that image, as you're seeing on the right, and I painted it into the painting. So random side note, I record in my closet because I feel like it just cancels out all of the noise and I'm able to get a really solid audio recording and um, a lot of times my cat Oliver likes to hang out with me when I do so and he is like fully snoring in the background. I just thought you'd want to hear. So if you hear any like noises in the background going forward, it's it's from him. Okay. Back to back to regular recording. I didn't want to completely destroy the flowers I made on the bottom, so I incorporated some of them into the swirls, and I think it resulted in a way more interesting painting versus if I just made lines. It helped me realize that more natural colors needed to come in too to break up all the natural colors that made up his fur and line-wise. Um, I left the Sedona Mountains more unfinished to match the look of the halo. I also liked how it looked more unraveled too.
I think you'd agree the most obvious tie I had to Blitzen was through our birthdays. Even the photo I'm using for him is from his last birthday, uh, so I wanted to create another interesting element relating to that. According to Google, Cosmos flowers were October's flower. Our birthday is October 29th, so I did 10 of those because you live to be 10, or you're going to see me paint in 10 of those. Um, a white color because I've never seen more white colors than at a funeral. Ooh, okay, maybe that's too sad, but that's exactly what I was thinking. Um, I'm using photo references from the internet, though I'm changing them enough to where I think it's okay to use them as inspiration. Usually, I'd recommend you use as much of your own photos as possible to keep it as originally yours as possible. Another comfort zone design element for me is something flying in the background. I decided on moths because again, according to Google, it has strong positive ties to the afterlife. Like it can represent transformation or even like the spirit of your loved one visiting you. So that kind of seemed like a no brainer. I went with warm neutral colors to balance out all of the reds and oranges going against a lot of blues in the top half. As we are nearing the end, I did want to mention that while I was working on this, it did feel like a final goodbye to him. Uh, so I, I've been keeping it more positive, but I wanted to let you know that I definitely was feeling all of it as I was painting. But I wanted to keep this video more lighthearted. So hopefully you're only feeling the love versus the sadness I had for his loss. Because that, you know, the point was just to feel more healed you know and um at this point everything is basically done and i do want there to be some sort of surprise for you so give me a moment and voila uh there were too many moths and honestly it seemed too serious so i added in some flying tennis balls to break that up and they happen to be his favorite toy of course so um i kept some swirls on the upper corners so that the halo background made some sense uh really this portrait became more of a dream uh kind of cheesy but it, it's like blitz and spirit is like appearing to me or something similar um if you made it this far thanks for watching i really appreciate it and i hope you feel po positivity from this if, if anything <laughs> um if you have suggestions for more videos or questions the comment section is open for you and hope you have a wonderful day folks